So thank you, I'm so incredibly happy that you are here so that we all can be here to celebrate an extraordinary woman and what she did 20 years ago. I can say that I never met her personally, but virtually. When she ran for Senate, she called me and she said, I want to be on your blog. And so for a month, she was the guest blogger on my blog as she answered questions about her campaign and about campaign finance reform. Now in those days, I wasn't yet convinced that this was the only issue. That's what I think now, this is the only issue. What other issue could there be? If we don't fix this issue, there's nothing else we can do. So what other issue is there? I didn't think that back then, but I think it now. And in 2014, inspired by her and by my friend Aaron Swartz, who actually convinced me to take up this fight, we did a walk in New Hampshire. In January, we started in Dixville Notch. There were about 30 of us. And we marched all the way down the state, ending up in uh, uh, Nashua on Granny D's birthday. And I remember the night before we left, we were in a bar up in Dixville Notch, and it was an incredible sleet and snowstorm. And this is just after there had been a polar vortex, and there was a very inebriated man in the bar who heard what we were doing and stood up on a table and said, you all are going to die! You're going to die! You can't do this, you're going to die! And the leader of our group, who was the kind of den mother of our, uh, uh, of our walk, Japheth Else, paused and he stood up and he said, this man is correct. We all are going to die. No one will die tomorrow, but someday in the future, all of us are going to die. But until we die, we need to fight, fight for a democracy. And with that, we launched that incredible walk. Now, I have to tell you, when I started this fight, I was not op optimistic. I thought it was an impossible fight, a fight we had to wage, but an impossible fight. But I have to tell you, I am more optimistic today than I have ever been about the chances that we will win this fight. Not just because of the extraordinary work done by groups like American Promise that have rallied a really diverse cross-partisan America to the idea of constitutional reform, but because we've seen real victories bubble up across the state, across the states. In 2018, there were more grassroots victories for fundamental reform, from gerrymandering reform to anti-corruption work to ranked choice voting, more state victories than at any election in American history, even in the progressive era. There was not this much energy, cross-partisan energy for fundamental reform. And that tells us something. It tells us that the people get it. Not quite the politicians yet, but the people get it. And in 2020, in this presidential election cycle, for the first time forever, we have at least seven of the Democratic candidates who have committed to making democracy reform the first thing they will do as president. Now that is an extraordinary victory. And our work now, yes, our work now is to take that commitment and turn it into something real. We've seen candidates like Pete Buttigieg, who's committed to really important reform, but we've seen candidates like, I see Kirsten Gillibrand uh, represented back here, who has committed to passing a voucher proposal, a democracy dollar proposal that would get every single citizen up to $600 every election to help fund campaigns. So that the politicians, when they look to funders, are looking to ordinary people, not to the tiny fraction of the 1%. Every one of these seven candidates has begun to talk about what's important. I know my friend Elizabeth Warren is also deeply committed. It's wonderful to see the Warren supporters here. Michael Bennett has made campaign reform a fundamental part of his campaign. This has never happened before. We have never had an election where so many people have made this central. And I want you to recognize that if we elect a candidate, who is committed to making fundamental reform the first thing that he or she does, 
in 2021, we could see it happen. I just want you to imagine that because it's been so impossible to imagine till now. We could see it happen. And if it happens, then everything that's great about this nation can flourish again through a democracy that actually represents us. But let me end with just these words. If it doesn't happen, what will we do then? Almost 12 years ago, Barack Obama stood before the AFL-CIO and he said this, if we don't take up the fight, the fight to change the way Washington works, then real change, change that will make a lasting difference in the lives of ordinary Americans, will keep getting blocked by the defenders of the status quo. Now, when Barack said that, it was true. It is still true today. And what we know is that if we don't get a candidate who commits and delivers on taking up this fight, then real change, change that will make a lasting difference in the lives of ordinary Americans will keep getting blocked by the car horns and the defenders of the status quo. These are the Koch brothers' car back here. But I think we need to start thinking now about how we are going to change the fight if in 2021 we don't get this reform. What's the next step? How do we change gears and begin to rally an even greater part of America, an America that represents both the left and the right to this fundamental reform? Because we cannot stop until the walk she began has achieved the victory she promised us we would get. I'm so grateful you've helped keep this going and we all will continue to walk until her wish is America's command. Thank you so much.